the point I'm going to really make is you never know when you're going to need the Red Cross. You know, I, that day I didn't think I'd need the Red Cross, right? I mean, I was on a plane doing this, but all of a sudden I had three Red Cross experiences within 14 hours, and it would really open my eyes that the Red Cross is there when you really need them. So you never know when you're going to have a fire or a flood or a tornado. The Red Cross is always there. So the impact that you can have, whether it's donating blood, time, money, you never know what may help you or your family. You still have the blanket that they gave you to, to comfort you. Most definitely. You came out of the Hudson River. Most definitely. They gave me the blanket when, as soon as I got to shore, there were three people waiting for me, two EMTs, and a gentleman from the American Red Cross with that blanket, and I still have that blanket at home. What does that blanket mean to you? It means that someone's there for you in time of need. That's, that's how I relate, that's sort of how I relate to it. Because every time I look at it, it's actually in my office, I have it draped over a chair in my office. And so every time I look at it, it sort of reminds me what happened that day, and they were there when, candidly, I had nothing. I was, you know, basically, when I got to the hospital, I had even no, I didn't have any clothes. But someone had gave me a blanket. What do you remember from that day? First is, I have a lot more gratitude in my life. You know, candidly, when, when the, I heard the explosion, you know, when the birds hit, I just thought the plane lost an engine, right? You'll get another plane, because I fly 100 plus times a year, right? No big deal, but no one knew at that time it happened on both sides you know, double explosion, right, but happened instantaneously. So at that point in time, the one thing that really resonates is when we had a lady on the wing holding a baby, and I was hanging out of the plane because I was the last passenger out. And I saw her there, and she was not moving. So, you know, my training, I was with gentleman with Tony Robbins for a long time. I was head of security for him, and I learned a lot of things. And when someone gets in that place, you sort of got to do something really drastic to shake them out of it. And I yelled at her. I yelled at her to throw the baby, and I knew she wasn't going to throw her baby, but I got her attention, and all of a sudden she gave her baby up, and I saw, saw people walking down the wing. And that's the one thing that res resonates with me every single day is if she hadn't done that, if we hadn't made that move, but all of us, most of us may not be here today. When did you know the plane was in trouble? After Captain Sullenberger said, this is your captain, brace for impact, and then I knew it was serious. So that was basically almost at water impact, correct? It was about one minute before water impact. He was, as soon as he crossed over the George Washington Bridge is when he said those, his famous words. And that's when I knew that something dire was pretty hap gonna happen. So you hit the water, right. you're like, I assume your thought process is, oh my God, we just survived that. I looked now up, gotta get out. yeah, I looked up, I looked out the window, saw lights, so I survived that. But immediately water started coming in the plane because of the way he landed. And then someone tried to open up the back door. So the door was partially open. So now you got water coming in from underneath in the back. So I was immediately from ankle knee to waist deep in water. But my game plan initially was get to the aisle, get up and get out. That was my game plan. But when I got to the aisle, something happened, sort of changed everything, my game plan. My, my mother who had passed away in 1997, I heard her talk to me, say, if you do the right thing, God will take care of you. And at that point, I knew I was alive, but I didn't know if anybody else in the back of the plane was alive. So that's when I went to the back of the plane and sort of tried to help get people out. And that's how I became the last passenger out of the plane. What was it like on that? I mean, was it chaos? Was it people talking? Were they not talking? Was it loud? Was it quiet? It, uh, during, during the whole six minutes before impact, it was quiet. You could hear a pin drop on the plane. The only thing that I heard is the flight attendants going, brace, brace, brace. And some lady in the back saying the Lord's Prayer. When we impacted, all of a sudden, then I, the term I would use is controlled chaos where no one's losing it, no one's stepping over people to get out, but things are happening really fast and there's a lot of things happening and immediately. Outside of that woman, did, was there anything else that you had to do that was other than just basically keep order and help assist? Or was there anything heroic? I mean, did you have to carry people out? Would it... No, we, there was one elderly lady in the back we sort of had to nudge out and a couple other, once we got her out of her seat, a couple of ladies helped her to go out the front left. But, uh, you know, I had to swim to get off the plane because there was a tugboat that sort of nudged the plane as they were backing out, and I felt water going back, and that was the moment I immediately thought Titanic. I'm like, this thing's going down, man. I gotta get out of here. And so that's when I jumped in and swam, and that's why I always I tell people I thank the Red Cross when I was a kid to have swimming lessons, because that one skill that I had back in the, early, in the late 60s, if I hadn't had that, I may never be able to get off the plane. Is that where you learned to swim, the Red Cross? Yep, Red Cross in Hillsboro, Ohio. <laughs> At the pool right there in Hillsboro, Ohio. Who would ever have thought? Yep. That's unbelievable. So you literally swam off the plane? I swam to the closest boat, which is into the wing. Okay. 36 so degrees. Who was the last person you saw before you got off? Was Sullenberger. It, what did he say to you? He didn't say anything. I didn't even know who he was. Because before I went out, I looked back at the plane, I saw somebody walking up and down the plane, and later I found out that was Captain Sullenberger after I, took, I had a chance to speak with him. Awesome. Anything else you want to add? No, I just say I, I thank the Red Cross for giving me this opportunity not only to come back to Cincinnati but help them raise much needed funds because, again, what's going on right now, like what just happened in Orlando, 
I've spoken in Orlando for the Red Cross. I know how they deployed. They were there within you know, hours after this situation. So I would say, you know, think when you have blood, donate it. If you have extra time, volunteer it. If you have extra money, gift it because you never know when that may impact you or more importantly, your family.